be looking at data definition language and data manipulation language in a bit more depth. You need to be able to show an understanding that DBMSs can carry out all the creation and modification of the database structure using its DDL or the data definition language. And similarly, they can carry out all queries and maintenance of data using its DML or data manipulation language. So you've got two different sets of languages, one that ends up creating the database and the other one that is used to search or modify the information in that database. We're going to be looking at the current industry standard for both DDL and DML, which is Structured Query Language, or SQL. You need to be able to understand given SQL commands, which are applicable for data definition language, which allow you to create the database structure. So you need to know what those commands are, and you should be able to use those commands. And similarly, you need to be able to understand the SQL-based data manipulation language commands, which allow you to create queries based on the structure that you've just created. In the exam, we only need to know how to use SQL for just two tables at the max. We don't need to worry about anything more complicated than that. So that makes life a lot more easier for us. So let's begin, as usual, by looking at some key terms. The first key term you need to be familiar with is data definition language which is a language used to create, modify, and remove the data structures that form a database. The second one is data manipulation language, a language used to add, modify, delete, and retrieve the data stored in a relational database. And finally, what is meant by an SQL script, which is a list of SQL commands that perform a given task. These are often stored in the file for reusability purposes. So nothing tricky so far. Let's start looking at industry standards. Now, DBMSs use a data definition language to create, modify, and remove the data structures. So think about tables, entities, relationships, and so forth. Now, these are the basics of a relational database. And they use DDL statements, which are often written as a script that uses a syntax similar to a computer program. Now, sometimes you might not be able to see that because you see this nice developer interface or something which is a graphical user interface, something a bit glossy in front of you, but behind the scenes, everything is scripted. DBMSs use a data manipulation language to then add, modify, delete, and retrieve data which is stored in this relational database. And DML statements are also written in the script that is similar to a computer program, exactly like DDL. And these languages have different functions. DDL of course, is used for working on the data structure, whereas DML is used to work with the data stored in the relational database. Most DBMSs use the same language for both, and that one is structured query language. Structured query language has commands which work for data definition and commands which work for data manipulation. Now, SQL was developed back in the 70s and since then, it has been adopted as an industry standard. So think of this as Ethernet, USB. It's that equivalent for working with databases. So you need to know what SQL is. And chances are whether you're using JavaScript, whether you're using PHP, whether you're working in Python, C Sharp, C, you will encounter SQL at some point in time because you will need to create a data store and you would need to query that data store for some information. Now let's look at some common DDL or data definition language commands in SQL. So we start by using the first command which is called create database and obviously that creates a database. Then you've got a command which is called create table which creates a table definition. Alter table which changes the definition of a table. Primary key which identifies one attribute as the primary key for the table. Foreign key which references another attribute as the foreign key of that particular table. Now there's a number of data types for the various attributes or the fields, character, which is the equivalent of char, fixed length text, var char, which is variable length text, boolean, integer, real, date, and time. So nothing quite strange here. We're going to be looking at these commands in action shortly, so please do pause the video and jot these down. So on screen you see a basic SQL data definition language script. 
Now you can see how simple it is. Create database school. That's the name of the database that you want to create. Create table student within that school database. And in this table, you use round brackets and then define the various different attributes that are part of that student table. For example, student ID, first name, surname, date of birth, and class ID. Now each of the data type is relevant to the ones that are in SQL. So instead of string, we use character, date is the same, and that's about it. You close the bracket and then you end it with a semicolon. And do remember, when you do create database, you don't need a semicolon because you just say that we're making a database. But when you create a table, you need to make sure you follow it up with a semicolon at the end of it. The next statement is alter table. And this allows you to alter the table that you've created. So in this case, we're saying alter table student and add primary key and an attribute in brackets. So this defines student ID as the primary key. Now you need to make sure that in the exam, when you're defining a particular table and you're asked to create a primary key based on one of the attributes, this statement needs to come after the table is actually created. And of course, next up on the screen, you will see that is create table class. We're making another one. Class ID, character, location, character, license number, character. Bracket is closed, followed by a semicolon, because that's the convention of creating another table. And then if you want to alter this, now we've got two IDs in here that we want to play around with. First is the class ID. So we're going to say alter table class and add the primary key class ID. And then we're going to alter the student table. And we're going to add a foreign key. And the foreign key is going to be the class ID there. So we're going to link the tables together. And to do that, we use references class class ID as the keyword for that. And that allows the link to be made. So all we're simply saying is that alter the student table, make class ID the foreign key, and link it to class table and class ID inside it. That's about it. As you can see that the scripting language is not a programming language, so it's pretty straightforward to understand. And you should be able to score full marks in these type of questions because they're actually pretty easy. They just flow with the logic as long as you know what the command words actually do. Now we're going to look at the second set of SQL commands. These are for querying and modification. So data manipulation language commands. We start off with select from, which fetches data from a database. And queries always begin with select. So if a table has already been created in a database, we're just going to select that table from a particular database. Where simply says that include only rows in a query that match a given condition, order by source the results from a query by a given column or a field in particular or an attribute, group by arranges data into groups, inner join combines rows from different tables if the join condition is true, especially for example when you have linked tables, and then you've got some count and average which are pretty straightforward. They return the sum of all the values, or they count the number of rows where the column is not null, it contains a value, or it returns the average value of a column. The second set of commands are called maintenance commands, and these allow you to maintain. That means add, edit, and so forth. So insert into adds a new row to a table, or a new record into a table. Delete from removes a row from a table. And update simply edits the row in a particular table with new data. So these are used when you're asked to change something in an already existing database. Pause the videos, jot these commands down. You need to ensure you understand and learn what these actually do. So let's look at some examples of DML-based SQL commands. So this query that you see on screen will show in alphabetical order of second name, the first and second names of all the students in a class 7a. So we're simply saying select first name comma second name. These are the attributes or the fields from student table where class ID equals 7a and order by second name. So it orders it by the second name and by default the order is alphabetical or ascending. The second query that you see on screen shows the teacher's name and the subject taught by joining two tables using license number as a key. So we simply say select teacher.teacher .teacher name and subject.subject .subject name because these are the attributes we want returned. From teacher, 
where inner join to subject on teacher dot license number is equal to subject dot license number. So this is a bit more complicated, but pause the video and try to understand what is going on. Now the first part is pretty straightforward. Select the teacher name field from the teacher table. Select the subject name field from the subject table. The second part is which can be confusing for some people. However, if you think about it, it's pretty straightforward. You're simply saying from teacher, where is joined to the subject using the license number. And only bring back data from those records where the license number is equal. So if there's a license number that exists in the teacher table and the same license number exists in the subject table, bring the data back. Now other types of SQL DML queries can come in the form of commands to insert values into a table to maintain that particular table. So something like insert into student values in brackets. Now you can see these values, they will simply be added to the student table. When you don't know the values for all the fields, you will need to specify the ones you do actually know of. So in this case, we will simply say insert into student, and then in brackets we say we're now going to insert in their student ID, first name, and second name, and then we follow it up by values, and we just write the three values down. Now this will only populate those three fields and not the remaining fields. So there are two different ways of inserting data into an SQL table that already exists. Now, the command to delete values from a table is similar. We simply say delete from a table. So delete from student deletes everything. And delete from student where student ID is equal to a particular ID number only deletes a single record. So in this case, we can actually use it to create quite complex queries where we can just work with an individual record. We can delete that. Or if we don't like everything, we can just delete the whole table. Now other commands you will come across are sum, average, and count. So here we're simply saying select sum on a particular attribute or field. So in this case, select sum on the exam mark from the student subject table. And that will add all the exam marks and give us a total. That's about it. And similarly, we can say select AVG for average from price from products. Select count of product ID from products, which will count all the product IDs which have a value in them. Again, the use of these is pretty straightforward. Now the best way to learn this is to try it. So on screen you will see some questions now which cover DBMSs and SQL. So do pause the video and have a go at these. Hopefully your understanding is strong enough that these will all make sense. You might want to rewind the video at certain points and try to address these questions accordingly. The first set of questions are all description based and the second set of questions are to do with SQL. So you're given three tables and then you need to talk about the relationship and then write a few SQL scripts to display certain pieces of data or query certain pieces of data. So do pause the video and have a go at both sets of questions. And if you are having difficulty with any of these, get back to me. So hopefully you know the difference between DDL and DML, what the common SQL data definition language commands are, what the common SQL data manipulation language commands are, and you can use these SQL commands to create queries. That's all from me for now. Well done for completing the AS computer science syllabus. You should have enough knowledge to tackle the exam with confidence. Of course, if there is something in the videos that you don't understand, do get back to me, and best of luck for your exams.